You're likely here because you'd like to learn Bootstrap 5. You may need it for a project at work, or perhaps you just want to learn the fundamentals so you can add it to your resume. You've come to the right place. Over the next few weeks, I'll be covering the main topics of Bootstrap 5. Hello, my friends, and welcome back to my channel. And if you're new here, I'm Jay from Coding with Jaybird. Here on my channel, we learn web development and current tech. If you'd like to see more of my videos, be sure to subscribe. Now let's get your favorite code editor ready and let's start coding. All web pages have one thing in common. They all have HTML documents and they all have some CSS styling. So how can we quickly style our HTML documents and improve our productivity? That's where Bootstrap comes in. Bootstrap is a popular front-end framework. Essentially, it's a toolkit full of CSS classes that we can copy and paste into our HTML document to quickly style a web page. So for instance, if we look at the simple web page that I've created here, it has a few divs, an H1, a couple of H2s, and some paragraph tags. And it has no styling applied to it right now. So we're going to practice applying some simple bootstrap styling onto this just to demonstrate how quickly we can style this web page. Let's start by having a look at the Bootstrap website. Here we are at getbootstrap.com. As we scroll down on the home page, we'll see that we have this include via CDN section. So the way we quickly add Bootstrap to any of our projects is simply by copying this first link, which is a CSS link, and pasting it at the very head of our document. Now, ideally, you want to have it above your own custom styling. So I'm just going to go ahead and paste that here. All right, and then the second link is a script tag that we want to place at the bottom of our body. So just before the closing body tag. So right about here. And this is going to handle the JavaScript that's required for Bootstrap to work in the way that it's meant to work. All right, so let's save that. And let's have a look at the docs page. So if we go to the second tab here, we're going to see some documentation. So if we scroll down, we're going to see a lot of things that are important to us, like the layout, the content, forms, components. So this tells you what Bootstrap has to offer and how we can use it and apply it to our HTML code. Now, if you notice here in the component section, there's things like buttons, cards, carousels, modals, nav bars. These are all amazing tools that we have right at our fingertips through this one simple Bootstrap framework. So let's go ahead and implement this into our HTML code today. Bootstrap uses Flexbox combined with different breakpoints to determine how a web page should look. And breakpoints are simply the pixels or the width of the screen or the browser width. So here, for instance, you can see in this purple writing, I've displayed extra small mobile screens. So screen sizes that are similar to a portrait cell phone that are less than 576 pixels. So where did that come from? Well, I added this span tag with an ID of breakpoints, and in my style.css, I've added some media queries to display these different screen sizes just so that it helps us during these tutorials while we're learning Bootstrap so we can see what's happening and at what breakpoint. So if I expand this right now, we'll see we went from an extra small screen to now a small screen. And now the small screen is anything greater than 576 pixels. It's usually a landscape for a cell phone. The next breakpoint is a medium screen, which is larger than 768 pixels. And then we have a large screen, which is greater than 992 pixels. And then we have an extra large screen, which is greater than 1200 pixels, and even an extra, extra large, which is larger than 1400 pixels. You can find the style sheet in my GitHub account, and I posted the link down below. All right, so how do we quickly style this web page? If you're thinking you need to do some styling in your style.css, you'd be wrong. All we have to do is add some classes to the right elements within our web page. So let's start by centering this H1 text. I don't really like it on the left. So all I have to do is go along into my opening H1 tag and type class equals text center. And there you can see the text was centered so easily. One simple class and all the styling was attached to it. See how this content looks so close to the edges of the frame? I don't like that. I want to have some gaps or some padding between my content and the edge of the browser screen. 
And I can easily do that by taking this first wrapper div and giving it a class of container. And look at that, we already added some padding. And you can see it more clearly if I expand this. And the padding changes based on the screen size. So today I'm not gonna focus on the details of Bootstrap. This is more of an overview to show you what the benefits of Bootstrap are and how we can quickly design a website using Bootstrap. Okay, now let's say I want these three boxes to be in some kind of uh, vertical column structure. Bootstrap can do that so easily. We don't have to use Flexbox and worry about aligning items and centering things. All we have to do is wrap the three elements, these three different boxes, in a div with a class of row. And then each one of these immediate children, so child one, child two, and child three of this outer div, we just wanna give them a class of call. And look at that. Everything is in a nice vertical column. Now it looks very plain. You can see that there's really no styling in here. Not a problem with Bootstrap. We can easily add borders, background colors, and so much more. So let's take this inner div where I have a class of call and let's also give it a border. And we'll say a border with a thickness of like grade three. Now this will make more sense over the weeks as I cover the different levels for borders. And if we wanna have a blue border, we can simply say border primary. We can even add rounded to round the edges. We can even say background primary subtle. And what that does is it puts a slightly lighter blue inside. Look at that. So quickly we were able to style this one box. Similarly, we can style our next box. So here we can add the same border border three, and this time let's say I want a different color. I want a red color. I'll say border danger. Then we can add our rounded class to round the edges. And again, some background color. So we'll say BG danger subtle. And look at that. Now we have a red box with a nice border and a light soft red background color. Just as easy as that. Now in our last div, let's say I wanna make this one green. So once again, I'll add my border thicknesses this time I'm gonna use the border success value. Oh, I forgot to give it the background color. And there you have it, within minutes, we were able to style this page. Now, it doesn't look the best, and that's not the whole idea of this tutorial. It's just to demonstrate how quickly we can style our web page. Now, what if I wanted to make it responsive? Well, you can see when you try to stretch the browser width here, that it's going to adjust automatically based on the screen size. Now, what if I wanted my columns to look different based on the screen size that I'm looking at? Not a problem with Bootstrap, it's so easy. We simply add another column class. So here I can say column small, I want it to be six. And column large, I want it to be four. So what we're saying is out of this 12 column grid structure, once we get to a small screen size, make sure that this first box takes up six columns out of the 12 columns width. So let's see what happens when I stretch it. See how it just stretched from half the thickness to double? Now it's taking up half of the website's screen size. Now if I shrink it, they're all evenly spaced out again. Okay, now I could take my second div here and I could give this a medium class of six and once again a large class of four. And lastly, for our third div, Let's give this just a large call class of four and let's see what happens. So as I get to small, just as we saw before, the first box took up half of the width of the web page. Once we get to the medium breakpoint right there, both of these first and second boxes take up half the width and the third box is pushed down. Everything looks great, everything's still responsive. And as I keep stretching to a large screen size, each one takes up four columns out of the 12 column grid structure. So they each take up a third of the web page's width. Today was just a tiny little peek into what Bootstrap has to offer us. I hope you've enjoyed this video today and now you've learned how to add Bootstrap 5 to your web page. Thank you so much for your continued support. And if you liked this video, please don't forget to hit that big thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. And also feel free to leave a comment down below. I love to hear from my viewers.
So thank you so much once again. And until next time, keep on coding.